Fast a double click. Okay. Anyway, a lot of you probably be asking yourself the question at the moment, end of the afternoon, why would somebody want to talk about failure in the first place? And even more importantly, celebrating failure. Well, my passion with failure, or rather, my passion with changing the attitude to failure um, started uh, when I was around about 28. Basically, when I was 28, my world pretty much turned upside down when I lost my first company. Um, that first company I'd started when I was still at uh, university, rather just after the idea started at university, and I, I set it up straight after I left university. And for about seven, eight years, I passionately worked seven uh, days a week, 24 hours a day, and pretty much that company was the only thing that I sort of lived for. It grew substantially big. We had um, operations in three countries, um, substantial turnover, a large amount of staff. So, you know, I really invested a large part of my time, all my money, and everything was dedicated to the business. So, as you can imagine, losing a business like that is a substantial shock to the system. Um, it also meant that, basically, because I hadn't taken out significant amounts of money, obviously it afforded me a very nice lifestyle, but I didn't have any savings. And so when I lost my business, I also lost my source of income. I didn't have any income. Um, I had to sell my house. I had to sell my car. And at the age of 28, married, fortunately no kids, I had to move back with my parents. Now, for most of you that are still living with your parents, that probably doesn't sound very bad. Um, but for those of you that have you know, lived on your own, if you spend 10 years living on your own, moving back with your parents is you know, quite a big uh, change, quite a big, uh, you, you really need to adapt. And fortunately, I have fantastic parents. They were very supportive. So that made it slightly easier. The funny thing that I discovered um, from this significant failure was two things. The first was an enormous sense of freedom. Um, the most amazing thing was that when I lost the business, as soon as I'd lost it, I was like, okay, get on with it, find something new to do. You know, it's not a huge problem. Whereas before, for several years leading up to losing the business, the bigger it became, the more worried I became about actually the potential loss. And so it was a very liberating feeling. Now, it was extremely hard work building myself back up. I mean, at one stage, I served coffees and delivered sandwiches just to make some extra money at night. Um, but it was a very rewarding and liberating experience, and I completely lost the fear of failure at that stage. The other thing that I discovered was that the more people that I spoke to, um, people that on the surface seemed very successful businessmen, drove their nice BMWs, had their companies, and you know, to all intents and purposes for everyone seemed very successful, came up to me because I, was, I used to talk quite openly about my failure and would sort of take me aside and say, look, you know, uh, how do you deal with the failure? Because, you know, my company is actually not doing very well. You know, I've got all these people. You know, how do you deal with it? So that was a very interesting other thing. Oops, let's pass this line. Um, now, I am a great lover of Portugal. As Carlos, when he introduced me, you know, I've got my heart is in Portugal. I chose to move from London to Portugal. Um, and I think Portugal's got fantastic opportunities. I think Portugal's got fantastic potential entrepreneurs. And it could be, for me, the California of Europe. There is one thing in Portugal, I mean, one thing that exists throughout the world, but I think is especially bad in Portugal, which is the fear of failure. Um, failure in Portugal is pretty much considered, as far as I've discovered, as game over. Uh, you know, you might as well move somewhere far away, because if you don't move, you know, People assume that you know, the people in white coats will probably come and take you away, put you in some place, and take you far away from society. So my passion with failure and changing the attitude of failure really started when I started seeing people in Portugal shy away from failure. And the reason is, I think, in Portugal, why we don't have a significant entrepreneurial culture is the very fact that because of this fear of failure, most people don't even try. Now, as far as I know, and I wasn't around at the time, but several centuries ago, Portugal was the leading risk-taking country in the world. You know, explorers would go all over the world, discover amazing things. And 20, 30 years ago, this attitude towards 
failure changed significantly in Portugal. Nowadays, very capable students leave university and the only objective is you know, go and work for a bank, get a nice job, get a stable salary. Whereas what I find is that the best time to start a business, the best time to take risk, the best time to be creative is actually when you're young because you haven't got those obligations. So if you look up the definition of failure in Wikipedia, you'll find the following. Failure refers to a state or condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective and may be viewed as the opposite to success. Now, I think in those last three words, if we can change the slide, yeah. Uh, in those last three words is basically where the problem lies, the opposite of success. I think we should substantially change, completely change, actually, our paradigm of failure. Okay. Um, and look at the opposite. Failure is actually a part of success, and it's a key part of success. Now, why is this? It's impossible to succeed without failure. Failure is totally linked to success. So you can't have one without the other. The reason for this is that nothing great is ever achieved without a significant amount of risk. If you want to do something amazing, you have to take a substantial risk. And this risk is equal to potential failure. So in order to achieve great things, you need to be willing to risk failure. Now, the funny thing that we find about failure is actually that failure turns out to be our greatest teacher. There's often things that we can learn much faster through failure than we can learn through our successes. So failure really, it's almost like a shortcut to success. You learn a substantial amount from your failures. And the reason for this is that failure leads to experience. And experience is essential for success. So for this reason, failure and experience and success are completely linked, and it's part of the same equation. The other thing about failure is that very often the road to success is not a straight one. So failure is very often an indication that you should change direction and move in a different direction. Or sometimes even, you know, you're going completely the wrong way. A substantial failure can actually allow you to move in a completely different direction. I'm a great reader of entrepreneurial biographies, and the most common thing you find in entrepreneurial biographies is that our greatest opportunities follow our greatest failures. Success is often achieved one step after our greatest failure. And finally, success is sweetest when you've tasted failure. If you've ever had something that's really easy, you tend not to appreciate it, but if you have failed, like I have, and you build up again, success tastes a lot sweeter. So as we're about halfway through my presentation, I just wanted to do a quick quiz to get you involved and you know, make sure you're not falling asleep yet. So this one, I think, should be very easy. And basically, I've chosen five of the biggest failures in history or some of the biggest failures in history. So can anybody identify who we're talking about in this case? Just shout it out if you want. I can read out the text. Basically, I have failed in business. I've gone bankrupt. I've suffered a nervous breakdown. I have lost in nearly all public positions I have run for. Now, I mean, this one should be very, very easy. Very good. So Abraham Lincoln is exactly the person described as we heard this morning. Let's see if we can get another one. I have failed almost 10,000 times to develop the product I aim to, to bring to the market. Very good. Thomas Edison, without whom we would be sitting here in the dark. Um, you know, one of the greatest inventors in history and the person with the most patents to his name, also the inventor that failed most in history. Oops. Okay. That one is even easier. We can go back one slide. Uh, I'm 60, unemployed, living in my car, and I've tried to sell my product unsuccessfully to over a thousand customers. Well, in this case, obviously I gave it away, um, but we're talking about Colonel Sanders from Kentucky Fried Chicken. This one, I think people should be able to guess this one. I'm the poorest man in the world. No, no, no. Okay, this one might be a little bit harder. We're talking about Donald Trump, who now is considered one of the richest people in the world, but in the 80s he was worth a negative $2 billion and was, by definition, the poorest man in the world. And finally, I did not make it into my high school basketball team. Very good. Now, you know, if Michael Jordan had decided at that age that he would be better off becoming a doctor or a lawyer, 
um, we wouldn't be without one of the biggest basketball stars ever. Um, instead, he used his failure, he used his experience to practice harder and obviously become a fantastic basketball player. So now let's get to what you can do in terms of failure. Well, my first advice would be, and you can do this all now, is ask yourself, what is your biggest failure? I mean, take a couple of seconds to think about this. What is the biggest thing you failed at? Now, if it isn't something substantial, the chances are you've not been taking enough risks. If you're not failing enough, you should really be asking yourself, have you been trying enough? So my recommendation to you would be dream and dream big. Uh, nothing ever great was achieved by people that had small dreams. Um, so if you're going out to achieve something, you're a scientist, well, in your, instead of saying my objective is to become part of a research team, why not say my objective is to cure cancer? I mean, it's better to aim high and then achieve half of what you're aiming for than to aim low and never get anywhere. Secondly, start out. As soon as you decided what your dream is, get going and do something about it. And when you're starting out on your road to success, expect failure. There will be failure along the way, and if you're expecting your failure, you can be prepared for it, and you won't let it knock you um, when it does happen. Also, instead of avoiding failure, learn to deal with it. And the only way to learn to deal with failure is to have failure over and over again. Start with small failures, overcome them, and then you can handle bigger failures and bigger failures and bigger failures until you become that success. And use those failures to climb from peak to peak. Now, the interesting thing when we're talking about peaks is if you look at those two peaks, in between the two peaks, you have a valley. And a lot of the time, to move from one success to an even bigger success, you need to move down, you need to endure a small amount of failure. Learn from your failures. As you remembered before, failure can be our biggest teacher and failure can be extremely valuable if you learn from your failures. If you don't learn from your failures and you keep on re repeating the same mistakes over and over again, you're never going to achieve anything. I mean, failure is not worth anything if you don't learn anything. But if you learn from your failures, it can be an extremely valuable tool. And finally, and I think this for Portugal is very, very important, and if there's anything that I can achieve today in convincing 200 people to look at failure differently and also to support other people in their failures, I think I've achieved what I've come here to do today. I think if we want to be supported in our failures, we need to support other people when they fail. And that counts for our family, our friends, our team. Very often, we laugh at the people that have failed. We look at them and they say, you know, it's, it's great to say, well, you know, the guy that was driving that big BMW, well, now he's broke. You know, fantastic. If we don't change this attitude, we're not going to create an environment where people can fail. And as a result, we're not going to create the country that we're capable of creating. So support everyone through their failures. If you could put on the video now. Video. Miss more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. we go back to the slides? So basically, if I have any question after, or uh, any point, any suggestion that I can make to you after watching that fantastic Nike video about failure, my advice to you would be fail, fail, fail over and over again until you finally succeed beyond your wildest dreams. Thank you. <laughs>